Hello and welcome everyone to our webinar Focus on LinkedIn. So all designed to help you as a small business owner to build engagement on LinkedIn and to transfer that engagement into business opportunities. So my name is Candy Richards. I'm the Development Manager for East Anglia here at the Federation of Small Businesses. So FSB is a leading business organisation designed to support sole traders and small business owners. And we do this in a variety of ways. So we advocate for change and campaign on lo and lobby on behalf of our small business members. And we've got a range of membership benefits as well, including a legal helpline, legal resource hub, health and wellbeing support, debt recovery support, late payment support, and much more. If you do want to find out more about FSB, head to www.fsb.org.uk and search for join us. And we will pop the link in the chat as well. So I've got the pleasure of introducing our trainer today, Mark White. So Mark is an FSB member, but also a LinkedIn professional. So for over 13 years, Mark has been dedicated to training people in LinkedIn. And this includes training over 500 companies, including bespoke training, group sessions and one to one training. So today, Mark's going to give you some of the inside tips and tricks on getting the best out of LinkedIn. Um, and he'll also be taking some questions at the end. So there's lots to pack in today. And if we don't manage to um, take your question, do reach out to Mark on LinkedIn, of course. So if you do want to post a question during the webinar, we do have the chat function available. So pop your question in there. And at the end of the session, we'll try and take as many questions as we can. So Mark, I'm going to hand over to you as the um, LinkedIn expert to tell us all we need to know about building engagement and business opportunities on LinkedIn. Well, that's uh, lovely. Thank you so much, uh, Candy, and uh, welcome everyone. Good morning. Um, thank you to Candy again and to the FSB for the opportunity to, well, have a little chat about LinkedIn from, well, what I affectionately call the LinkedIn cave, in all honesty. Um, we're going to, as Candy said, have a look at LinkedIn this morning, but from a perspective of how we can leverage it for your business. Yeah, so we'll be leaving to one side the recruitment and elements like that and focusing very much on your business and how to work it for you. Um, already done a short intro, so I won't bore you with this other than one small bit. At the end of the session, I've got a short sort of request, a sort of competition almost for you. Um, and there'll be prizes, which is always good. Um, so do feel free to take a screen grab or two as we go through the session, because you might be able to use that in what we're going to look at there, if you will. So, as I said, something at the end for you, which I hope will be sort of beneficial. Now, going to go straight into the, the session. So for me, you know, when we go on to LinkedIn, well, we ought to know why we're there. And I know that sounds obvious. But I also know that on occasions I'll go in there and I'll I'll get distracted by what's on the home page and I'll go somewhere else. And two hours later, I sort of wonder what I was uh, what I've been doing. Well, if we do that, clearly we're going to not be getting the best out of it. So I'm going to suggest that when we go in there, we do need to have a plan. I'm also, however, very confident that you know exactly what that should be. In other words, you know why you're there, why you're on LinkedIn. You know very well, actually, who you want to talk to as well. Um, and the reason I feel quite so confident about that is that I'm going to try and encourage you not to think of LinkedIn as this online space where you suddenly become a keyboard warrior. I'd like you to think instead that going onto LinkedIn is very much like walking into a big room. And when you walk into a big room, thinking here, networking event, conference, whatever you'd like to sort of imagine it as, you really do know what you're trying to do there. It may not always be comfortable for it, certainly not for me. But when you walk in, you know that the right sort of people are in the room. You know that actually what you want to do is probably come away maybe with business cards, maybe with meetings set up. But you certainly want to get your message across as to why it is that people should be talking to you and the sort of things that you can help them with. So throughout the session and indeed when you're on LinkedIn in general, I'm certainly going to encourage you to think of LinkedIn as this big room and every interaction as an interaction that might happen, shall we say, face to face. Now, in that big room, 
clearly you're going to have a plan, or we hope you do. For me, as I said, not a great networker. I always walk in there and my eyes go around the room looking for someone I already know. Okay, might be an easy way out. But for me, that's a great, that's a nice safe place for me. It's also that actually when I'm there, I want to be sort of, you know, I want to at least make myself available. I want to be findable because a lot of people are kind enough to say, well, actually, you need to talk to Mark or you need to talk to Candy or whomever you might be need to talk to. So, again, I want to leverage that potential word of mouth and the same on LinkedIn. We want to have, for example, a profile which allows people to understand what it is that you do and can offer them as quickly as possible. Equally, we might go and find new people. Now, in a big sort of networking event, you might be looking around at sort of name badges all morning, which isn't a great way to do it. LinkedIn is a bit different. We can actually identify the people we want to talk to. So we're going to have a look at that today as well. And I'm also going to suggest that as you wander around the room, if you catch, uh, you know, a, a sort of you hear someone talking about a topic that actually maybe it's one of your areas of expertise or it's something that you're interested in, then you're going to join that conversation. So there are lots of ways we can work the room. We might even be one of those who sort of slips a few leaflets or business cards on some tables as we go around. I realize that won't be you, but, you know, they do exist. Or you might even book a stand or maybe, and I know you have this on some of the online networking events, maybe you get to do a sort of two minute or five minute presentation slot. On LinkedIn, we have all those opportunities. Your presentation slot is almost like your post. The conversations for me are people posting and commenting afterwards. And what we're going to try and look at today is to identify that if you're going to go into that big room, LinkedIn in this instance, then I want to remind you that there's more than one way to work it. You do not have to follow the ideas that someone else has to the letter. If we can follow some of the tactics, then that's great. But actually, it's you who knows who you want to talk to. It's you who knows what is going to make your prospects sit up and take notice. My suggestion, however, is we've got some tactics we can apply and that we actually want to employ as many of those as possible. If we just go in there and use the same tactic time in, time out, actually, it's probably not going to work ideally. We need different methods of attack. So we're going to have a look at some of those different methods as we go through the session this morning. The other thing I'll throw in here, if I may, and some of you may already be familiar with this, LinkedIn has this, this sort of tool. I mean, I call it a tool. Um, they actually set it up as a sort of gamification, if you like, uh, for their sales navigator, so one of their sort of premium accounts, uh, called the Social Selling Index, bless them. Um, and what it does is it gives a sort of graphic representation of some of the key elements that are involved in selling marketing yourself online. And LinkedIn breaks these down into four sort of chunks of 25, hence giving you a score out of 100. It might be worthwhile having a look, not to get sort of caught up in it and sort of thinking, oh, how do I up my score? But actually just to recognize that as you put in place some of the things we're going to look at and some of the things that you're already doing, you just watch the score eke up. And the elements, by the way, that are important here are First of all, as you'll see on the screen here, they call it establishing your professional brand. This is you. You walk into that big room. How do you look? Yeah. What image are you giving off? Is it shirt and tie? Is it, uh, I don't know, motorhead T-shirt and ripped jeans? Each of those gives a very different feel to the person that you're talking to or people who see you in that room. Second element is you want to be finding the right people to talk to. So it measures that a bit. You know, are you interacting with perhaps the, the, the sort of board level or the types of people that could be of interest to you? On the back of that, of course, this is number four on their list is building relationships. It's all well and good if we found them, but we need to talk to them. So, again, that's an important piece. And then the last bit, third on their list, is engaging with insights. That's the sort of marketing piece to you and me, uh, though it could also be, of course, direct messaging. It could be commenting. So there's lots of ways of, that we can engage with people on LinkedIn. But have a look. You've got the URL at the bottom here. So linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI. 
you may find it interesting, not because you have to fixate on the numbers, but actually if one of them is particularly low, then maybe that's an area where a little bit more effort might actually provide some results for you. So have a think about that as well. So what do we got? We've got two things. Big room. Treat all the interactions on LinkedIn as though you're face to face, but do work the room. And here's a little sort of measure about how you might keep track of that. So with that in mind, a couple of things to play with. Um, we're not going to go heavy on the profile today. Those of you who've been in sessions before, I have no doubt that you've done profile to death. However, if we're looking at it from an engagement and a sales perspective, I would like you to perhaps have a second look at a couple of elements. The reason it's so important, the reason your profile and the professional branding piece, as the SSI would call it, is important, is that until I have the pleasure of actually talking to you, your profile, well, it's you. And people who don't know you or haven't had that chance to talk and to you know get to know you a bit better, well, actually, they're going to make decisions and they're going to have perceptions based on what they see online. We need to make sure it's the right things. We also need to make sure from an engagement perspective, because we're here to build business, of course, that actually the profile does a job of work. We need to build in not only text, but also imagery because that's important. And those two profiles you've got in front of you, just take a moment to reflect, where did your eyes go? I'm guessing that for most of you, your eyes probably went to poor old Ben on the right hand side. Well, not poor old Ben, because it's doing the job of work. In other words, we are drawn more to the visual elements of LinkedIn. And if we can, once we've got and we've drawn people's attention, if we can then use our profile and particularly things like the featured area to direct people to our other resources or put them into a sales funnel, if that's what you use, or at least to show them and demonstrate ability, then this is a brilliant, brilliant way to do it, no matter how people arrive at your profile. So, as I said, not going to go in depth here, but there's three areas I'd like you to think of. The profile itself shouldn't be a CV. Yeah, even if you're looking for a job, it shouldn't be a CV. I'd like it instead to be a sort of glossy brochure about you. I say about you, actually also about them, about the people reading it. It's going to be social proof. It's going to highlight, I hope, things that actually are going to be of interest to the people reading it and how perhaps you can help them by the services that you bring. I'd also suggest that it needs to be a signpost to resources and a channel or a channel through to your funnel pages, to the signups, to booking a less, to booking a, a meeting or something of those things as well. In other words, we have lots of particular, particular ways that we can play with this. The first one I'm going to encourage you to think of and just to re-examine is the banner, that element in the background. Think of it as a shop window, a big billboard. Mine's well, quite basic, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm a sort of basic sort of person. Um, I've got a little bit of text, says a little bit what I do, doesn't focus too much on the uh, client, should do perhaps. You've got some on the right-hand side, though, that do a very different job. A couple of them there, individuals, they're very much branded around the personal branding. They are also focused, the top one, for example, on calls, coaching. What they sell, they're trying to already touch the pain points the people have and why they should talk to them. We've got the FSB one, again, bit of positioning there. And we've got something really colorful in terms of the Rosalyn David one as well. Each of these gives a real message. And if yours doesn't give a message or doesn't use that space, I'm really gonna encourage you to change or to modify it. And it might be pointing people in certain directions. It might just be giving a first instance of why they should talk to you but please do consider how you use that individually or as part of your team. So first one, banner, really important. Second one, headline, that little bit of text under your, under your name. Now, a lot of you will have already sort of worked at this and played with it, and that's brilliant. It's important because it's the first bit of text people see on your profile. So it's good for that reason. Perhaps for me, even more important is the fact that it follows you around the site. 
And we're going to be looking at posting a little bit later and also perhaps a comment strategy. In other words, commenting on people's posts. Well, in each of those cases, part of your headline field accompanies you. And so the 80, 85 characters that you start on your headline field is really important. I've given you my example of mine here. Again, mine's quite sort of functional in terms of what it does. But the first 80 characters is also a standalone statement because I know that those are the ones that are going to start to appear alongside my comments. So I want to make sure that it has a message in itself. The rest adds to it. Now, just to show you that there's lots of different ways to do this, I've picked out some people who do a similar thing to me and got a couple of examples here. Second one down, very much more visual. They've got keyword, little keyword snippets there. So they present themselves in a very different way. They've also got graphics. Well, it's a Canva design specialist as well as a LinkedIn trainer there. So that's probably coming out with that. The third one down, LinkedIn selling mastery, high ticket sales using LinkedIn, arrow downwards. They're trying to grab your attention and they're trying to push you towards their about section or their featured area. So they're using it almost like a hook. And actually that's quite a nice way to play. We all do similar things, but there's very different ways of presenting it. And if you can think what is actually gonna influence your clients or your prospects, then hopefully you can add a similar sort of thing in for you. And it might reflect personality too. And the last two, for example, I've got here, hopefully these appear okay on your screen, currently working for your competitor on engaging LinkedIn campaigns. <gasps> FOMO, FOMO. In other words, they're trying to tap into the fact that, okay, your customer, your, sorry, your, pro, your competitor are using me. They're getting the benefit from this. Isn't this something you'd want as well? So they're using a slightly different approach. And the last one, um, which I sort of quite like, but would never sort of do myself, a guy called Andy Foote over in Canada, but he's a Brit over there, reassuringly expensive LinkedIn coach. He used to have, I'm the LinkedIn trainer you should have hired. So both of those, a little bit edgy. Yeah, not my style necessarily, but massively effective. You have to decide what is effective for you. And people can tell you it has to be this format, this format, it doesn't. It can be any format you want, but it needs to reflect you and it needs to attract your potential prospect because it follows you around the site. 85 characters, really key there. So there's your second thing. Third and final thing, and then we will leave the profile to one side, the featured area. Massively underused, massively valuable. If you haven't got the featured area, please, please, please do think about putting it in there. If it doesn't appear on your profile, then top of your profile, there's an add profile section button and you can add it from there. What you put in there, though, again, start point tends to be we'll put in a post, which is great. In other words, it gives you a place to pin your most recent posts gives a bit of longevity to it. Yeah, we push stuff out, it goes into the ether. After a while, it sort of comes down a little bit. But here we have the chance to put it on our profile and hence direct people to that post. So that's a good thing in itself. However, take it a step further. Think about the idea of the conversations that we want and the potential conversions. Well, we could therefore put a, almost like a signpost through to resource, maybe on perhaps YouTube, or maybe a portfolio that you've got on Instagram, or somewhere that, don't forget, it needs not to be behind a, some sort of firewall, but nevertheless gives people something else to get hold of, something which deepens their understanding of what it is you can do with them. So you can link it externally, you can link it internally, that's great. The final one, and the one that really sort of turns the screw just a little bit here, is that you can also put it through to I'm going to call it a funnel page. In other words, book some time with me. Gentleman here puts it through to a Calendly link. Others, it's sign up for my newsletter or perhaps download my 10 free tips for or my information guide. These are really nice ways to do it. And you can now modify the image in there as well to make sure it fits. 
But what we're doing is we are actually devising and creating the conversation and then also adding in there the conversion factor. In other words, pushing them towards external resources, which you've already got set up, one hopes. Um, I was late to the game, but I'm getting there. Um, and actually trying to then push them into a different funnel, which you can then follow up and bring back to LinkedIn. So three areas that I'd really encourage you to think of LinkedIn for, on LinkedIn from this profile perspective and just creating that environment, which as people get in there, you can hopefully convert and use to your advantage. So with that in mind, you've got yourself dressed in the right way to walk into that big room. We now need to go and search out the people we want. And I talked about a number of ways that we can do this, actually ways that we can play the system to make sure that we are talking to the right people and hopefully getting across the right messages. Now, I talked about the fact that for me, I'm, I'm certain you know who you want to talk to. If not, then I really encourage you to work it out. In other words, who is your ideal customer profile or your buyer persona, whatever you want to call it, who is it? that you would like to talk to and engage with. And LinkedIn is one of those channels. Now, you, of course, may have a, a sort of big old sort of put together of how you want to do this and who you want to talk to and demographics and everything. Um, that's as it should be. LinkedIn, however, isn't quite so sophisticated. And so what we have to try and do is bring that information back to LinkedIn in a format that it understands. And that means that we can tap into job titles. We can tap into where they work or location or categories, industries, verticals they work with. In other words, we've got lots of ways that we can start to identify the people that we're interested in. Okay. Bear with me on this because we're going to try and do this in sort of real time now. We want to try and make sure that we bring across that ideal situation, those ideal people, and try and make sure that we have those working for you. So let's do that. Let's go on to LinkedIn. And we have a search box up here. Hopefully now you're seeing LinkedIn. Search box, top left-hand corner. My first encouragement to you is that actually don't type anything in this search box. Instead, click in there and just do a blank search. The reason for that is that most of the stuff that goes on in the search sits behind this initial box. And once you do that, we find that in LinkedIn sort of reveals that every time it searches, so every time we put something in the keyword search up there, it goes looking in 10 different places. Now, if we're in that big room, then we're looking for people. So I'm gonna choose that here. Again, we're directing LinkedIn down the route we want. Here now, we have the opportunity to put together the type of person that you're interested in talking to. We have 926 million. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there. If we play a little bit with the filters though, we can start to bring that down to the ones that we are interested in. And we've got a whole host of these. Now, the first element I'd suggest is that actually you probably, it's the job title we're interested in. So if I wanted to, I might say, well, actually I'm interested in, I don't know, marketing directors. Okay, I'd like to see marketing directors. And I'd like that to be perhaps in, let's say, the UK. So let's treat that as my first step. If we do that, we find there's 39,000 of them. So we've got a decent number there. As we build it up, however, we may realize that, well, marketing isn't going to be the only thing we want. We might actually be interested in someone who says they're in comms or perhaps they're in communications. And each of those will be the right sorts of people. Equally, we might be interested in the fact we don't want everyone. We would like to see just directors or we'd like to see head of department or maybe VP. We're not going to spend loads of time on the Boolean search today. If you're interested in that, run a couple of sessions on that as well. And it's, it really helps sort of identify it. But here, what we've now got is a much more I suppose, full impression of the people we're interested in. We've extended our reach, but we have now hopefully got people that will be of interest to you. Now, for me, key step here. 
I've just typed this in. You will build up your own buyer personas, your customer profiles, whatever you want to call it. Once you've done this and you've run the search, can I encourage you to save it? LinkedIn doesn't have a save search button. But if you go to the uh, bookmark on browsers and you bookmark this, I'm just going to put it uh, Marketing Directors UK <clears throat> and done. You've now got a place where you can come back. And if that is your focal point, then actually it gives you an ideal place now just to go into your bookmarks. I call mine the search vault. And there it is. If I click on that, we find that actually LinkedIn has built in to the uh, URL, the page name, all of those people. We can now start from that first key point immediately. Yeah. So we've got who we're looking for. Now what I want to do is help you break it down, just as we would in that big room. Lots of ways to play it, and you can intertwine these as much as you want. But if we go back to filters, and let's just think back to those different types of ways of working the room. Well, for me, the first one is go and find people you know. So first degree connections, show results. This now gives me 279 of my ideal customer profile who I already know. Have a look through your own list. If you are not already talking to them, the question has to be why? Why aren't you talking to them? Or when was the last time you talked? Because these appear to be people you already know, who know you, who would be ideal ones for you to talk to. So there's the people you know in the room. Just go back to all filters. Second degree connections. These are people you can be introduced to. So now we're looking at your ideal set of target people, but now we're looking at ones that you don't already know, but you have a common connection. And LinkedIn will tell you who that is, so you can go and approach them. So we're starting now to warm up those and we're finding different approach mechanisms, which is great. Equally, back to my filters again, maybe I'd like people local. Well, I'm in Norwich. Uh, you can tell from the accent probably. Um, so Norwich, UK, there we go. Now, do I know any of those who are local to me? Indeed, I do. So if you're perhaps running a search or running an event, then it's a great way to identify the people who might be of interest to you. So again, we're just building up different ways of playing it, different ways of using the search to work that room, to identify the people who are going to be the ideal set for you. And I've got two more that I really like. If I put this back to the UK again, okay, there we go. So we talked about introductions, we talked about word of mouth. Candy, for example, if I've sort of looked at her profile, have I got the opportunity to tap into her connection so I could perhaps ask her for an introduction? Well, here, connections of connection, if I put Candy in here, spelling Candy's name right, there we go, there she is. So what it's now saying is, does Candy know any marketing people? Well, yes, she knows 31. Well, maybe if I ask her very nicely, she might be able to introduce me to some of these people. Or maybe if I check with her and ask, can I mention your name when I ask them to connect? We've now warmed it up. We've created a very personal link. So we're still focusing in on your target audience, but we're finding different ways to warm up the approach, to make it as likely as possible that they not only will say, yes, I'll talk to you, but actually want to talk to you. Thank you for letting me do that, Candy. Let me just go back to all filters. And one final one for you, if I may, let's just reset that and take Candy out of the picture. How about tapping into all the work you've already done? In other words, if you are in that room, Maybe what we can do is say, well, actually, do any of these people work for companies that are already or have been clients of yours? So here under past companies, let's say, say, Shoesmith did some work for them and keeping the legal sector. Let's go DAC Beechcraft. There we go. So now I'm asking the system to show me anyone who is a marketing director or marketing head of marketing and who used to work for an organization or organizations that I've done business with? Again, the answer is yes. 
this again is a fabulous way then to get me in front of the people using that as my intro. And if they've only left recently, perhaps they even remember the sessions that in my case, I might've run there. In your case, the work that you have done with these customers. What we're doing is we're opening up different ways of you leveraging the network you have and all the great work you've done and using LinkedIn to hone in on the people that you want to talk to. And I hope some of those are ones that actually you can see would make real difference to the opening strategy and, and ideally the opening conversations that you can have with people on LinkedIn. Back to the search, just to catch up with the slides. As I said, click into the search box, go behind the search. We see the 10 different areas. The one we've just looked at is what I call a targeting search. Yeah, so we're actually got characteristics. We can do that for people, we can do that for companies. And here's what we've done. We've worked through, did a little bit of a Boolean search in there. Sorry about that. The ands, the ors and stuff. It allows us to be just that little bit more specific. Equally, though, we can extend that out and we can work it in whatever way is right for you. When we've done that, then, as I said, for me, brilliant way is to actually create almost like templated start points. In other words, once you've done it once and you've created perhaps that little sort of string of information, now I want you to be able to go back to it at will. And if you save it as templated start points, again, just going back to my main system here, if I go into mine and I go into my bookmarks, my LinkedIn search vaults, you'll notice I've got a number of them here and I've got some, the ICP, Ideal Customer Profile, and I've got some focus points and it gives me the start point for a number of different searches, which allows me to get on with the business of finding and contacting rather than planning out who it is I'm looking for it really does save a load of time. So if you can apply that to your business, then I'd suggest there's a lot of opportunity to be had there. So I'm gonna leave that with you, have a think about that. The other one I'm just gonna quickly sort of mention is that I talked also about in that big room, yeah, we can look at name badges and that's great, but we're also just you know keeping an ear out. Who's talking about what? And that for me is where we get onto what I call engagement searches. In other words, places that people seem to gather and chat to each other on topics. And if I can tap into that, well, I don't have to sort of push my way into the middle of the sort of discussion and sort of take over. But what I can do, of course, is I can see who's in there. I can see who's talking. I can make myself known to them by adding to the conversation. How do we go about that? Well, it's all in the search. If we go back, clear the search down, click into the search one more time, blank search. Now, instead of choosing people, I'm going to choose posts. And in here now, it gives me access to all sorts of different posts that people are making. And if there's a certain topic that I'm interested in, it's a topic perhaps that I can, I know, contribute to, or it's a topic I'm interested in. Or perhaps it's what my ideal customers are likely to be talking about, you know, problems on LinkedIn or building LinkedIn or sales development or marketing. Then all I do is I put in those keywords. I then have filters which allow me to say, well, actually show me the latest at the top. I could even say, well, only show me perhaps people that I'm interested in or maybe only people from a certain company that I'm interested in if you're targeting a certain organization. In each of these ways, you can start to build up and see people and conversations of interest to you. And when you find them, the best way, so let's take Simon's as an example here. Do, 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 if it comes back to me. Okay, let's just try that one more time. There we go, back to Simon. So down here, for example, I now have the opportunity to comment. And so I can actually now engage with Simon. I can leave a comment, hopefully something that will be relevant to him. And if he doesn't already know me, then I've just peeked my head, poked my head above the parapet. I've made myself in his line of sight. 
And a great, great way to actually get in front of people that you don't already know is to identify content that they've put there and then add to it. Adding a comment generally is going to help them, presuming it's not a sort of uh, a, you know, a nasty comment, which I'm sure it wouldn't be. But if you are able to put something which isn't just great post, thumbs up, but actually adds to the post that they've made, then that's brilliant. A fabulous follow-up, of course, is to then use that as your message of introduction. Hi, Simon, saw your post on researching a potential employer, really liked it, went through it myself. Hopefully a comment made sense. Just wondered if you'd be open to connecting. And that's probably just under 300 characters. It gives them a point of reference. It actually aids them. And now you take it to the next stage of actually talking to the person or the people you're interested in. Extra tip, when you have one which has got a lot of interaction, have a look at who has left the comments and who's left the reactions, because these are also people involved in that conversation and ones that you might well be interested in talking to as well. So lots of different ways we can play this. Targeting people, listening, putting yourself in the situation where you are in front of the people that you are interested in engaging with and talking to. And let's face it, who need your services. OK, so we've played that out. Now we get on to a couple of the nitty gritty bits. How do we develop the conversation? As I probably just indicated, for me, one of those key bits is actually when you walk up to someone and say hi, when you start the conversation. Walking up to someone in a big room, handing them a business card and running off, I'm not sure is the best way to make a first impression. But that's what a load of people do. They send you an invite, no message. I'm going to encourage you to think of that invite as your opportunity to put your branding first and your first impression. People say that, oh, yeah, it doesn't work so well. I put a blank one in. It's probably because the message isn't a good one. Different strategies, different opinions on this, but that would be mine. Start the conversation in the way that's right for you. Yeah. <clears throat> Once you've done that, however, hopefully they accept. If they don't, we'll have a look at that in a second, but hopefully they accept. And you can then start the dialogue. Not necessarily straight away. We might have to have a bit of patience. I'd probably thank them for accepting. But I wouldn't go straight for a pitch. I think you and I both know just how annoying that can be. You've accepted someone's invite. 30 seconds later, long, long spiel pitching their product. I think they call it a pitch slap. Not a good way. Not a good look likely to get you disconnected immediately. A gentle one, perhaps good, thanks for the invite, nice and polite. But if you're gonna start putting things forward, my encouragement would be to leave it, leave it a couple of days maybe even, have a bit of patience there. You need a bit of organization to get it done, but nevertheless, it makes it slightly less needy and slightly less, this is the only reason I wanna to connect to you. And it allows the channel to develop. It allows them to see your posts in the meantime, because LinkedIn highlights your posts once you've just connected. Endgame ultimately is to get them off LinkedIn, because you want to have the face to face. You want to talk to them. But actually, we need to put the places of the touch points, if you like. We need to try and make sure it works for you. And there's different ways we can play it. Text is good. But some of you may already have played a little bit with the voice or the video. Now, I've put from mobile because that's the only place you can send it at the moment on LinkedIn. You can receive them on the desktop, but they're getting really high levels of interaction. And if you go to your mobile and you go to the app, top right hand corner, you've got the little speech bubbles for the messaging area. Next to the text box down the bottom here, as you can see, there's a little old microphone hold that down and you can actually leave up to a minute voice message. I'd, I'd keep it lower than that. I'd keep it a nice, gentle, hi, nice to meet you, be great for a coffee, whatever it is. Don't pitch, but allow it to give you a little bit, a little sense of you, that personality coming through. It's a great way to cut through. And also there's still a novelty value there because people aren't really sure about it. You know, what does that do? 
You can even do videos if you want. Not for me. Got a face for radio, as you've probably already seen. Sorry, I keep up to date. Apologies. Face for podcasts. Let's keep that up to date now. Um, but if you are comfortable doing it, then please, it's a good way to play it. One of our issues, though, of course, is that actually we get ghosted a lot. You know, people connect and then they just leave it. Um, some suggestions for you. Um, if they have actually ghosted your invite, then first of all, can I suggest that you do just check first of all if they have seen it? So the way you do that is if you go into my network <clears throat> here and then you go to see all in the top right hand corner. Here you can see at the top who you have sent invites to. Yeah, so if you've sent them an invite and they are still in here, then they just haven't reacted to it. In other words, it's still in their inbox. It's still waiting their attention, if you like. If they're not in here, then I'm afraid they've rejected you. <laughs> um, don't take offense, people do. Um, but actually what we want to try and do is try and make sure that if they are in that position, maybe withdraw it and we try again. You could follow them if not. What you could also do is use with the, uh, the the search on uh, on company members and actually then in, interact with other members of their team. And that's another way to play it. As you then put content out and their team members like it, they are likely to see more and more of your content, even though you are not connected. So that's quite a nice play as well. If they have accepted your invite, well, you've got a few more options. Give them a gentle nudge. Not a big long message, not a big sales pitch, but just a little nudge, you know, in the area. Be great to meet up in person. The voice message is a good one. Maybe you could go back to actually commenting on their posts. Again, you have access to all of the posts that they make, and that's a nice way to do it. It just keeps you sort of visible, but without being too pushy. If you wanted to take it a step further, of course, and you're keeping an eye on their company news or their own personal ones, and if they've had a success, then you could congratulate them. In other words, you're paying attention. Or you could send them a bit of information that's relevant to them that you've produced. Again, sending a post to them, and that's quite good. Or let's face it, an email as well. So it's lots of different options we could play with. It's a case of you deciding what is going to get you the best results. And there are lots of ways to play it. If you're going to comment, by the way, don't use the automated stuff. Yeah, please use either the supportive one or highlight extra information you can give. And always, always use the mention function. Their at and then their name, because it, it sort of makes sure that LinkedIn does actually inform them that you've commented. Yeah, so at and then the name is good. My final thing here is that, again, if you are looking to use the commenting strategy in particular, then my suggestion is again to build up lists. And I know it sounds all very time consuming, but I beg to differ. It's, it's you do it once and it's a really powerful tool. So I've called this a content vault. If I go back to again my screen here and we go to my own set of elements here, the search vault or the content vault. What I've got is now differing types of searches. So if I'm trying to support my first degree connections, and this is something I try and do most mornings, I will have here a search where it will give me, here are your first degree connections, here's what they've posted, allows me to comment on them, support them. And I've got ones for the Norwich area, so a local area, I've got ones for people who are actually posting on certain topics. I would suggest that if you can build up some of those over time, it starts to give you the type of content which becomes immensely valuable to you. So again, play your time effectively, work it so that you can come back, and hopefully you'll have something which again is going to set you up for going forward. Final thing, drawing them to you. So we've worked the room a little bit, we've listened to what's going on, now we've also got the chance to sort of talk to them. We've also got a little bit of a stand, perhaps, you know, the roller blinds, so roller blinds, not at all, the roller stands um, in the room. One key piece of advice if you are pu publishing on LinkedIn, please, I know there's a load of talk about the algorithm ongoing. Um, please don't chase it. Be aware of it, by all means. Indeed, you should be aware. We don't want to sort of, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, it's going to push our content up. 
But if I had to go between decent content and playing the algorithm, then you've got my opinion at the bottom here. Poor content, no algo, really bad. Poor content, but you're working the algorithm, I still don't think it's going to do you a load of good. Where it really kicks in, though, is where your content is valid, it's good, it delivers value, and it's something that your connections want to engage with. And that, for me, along with playing the system a little bit, is always going to be your best approach. In doing the approach, I encourage people to think of what I call the five C's of posting. Yeah, in other words, think of the types of things you're posting. Now, there's a lot of talk at the moment about the algorithm changing. As it happens, it's been changing over the last, well, it's always changing, but it's been changing since the start of the year. Highlighting more business stuff. Well, yes. In any case, I really would suggest you're all, you should be mixing it up. Mixing up between a bit of branded stuff. Here's what you do. You want to promote your stuff at the end of the day. But equally, putting posts out which show just how good you are or show the results. That's a really important thing. But it's also really important to have personal posts to see a bit of you. If it's just you, then we're in sort of, you know, going into that big room. Hi, nice to meet you. Mark, tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a Scorpio and I've got a Labrador. It's not what they were expecting to hear in the business environment. So if I just do personal stuff, then immediately we've just put it to one side, but mixed in with the showing what you can do, a bit of thought leadership, even if you've got that opportunity, then that's great. Second C, consistency. Try and get into a rhythm. A tone of voice would be great as well, if you can. Always useful. Leave creative just for a second. Community. People comment, please comment back. Use the mentions, the at, and drawing people in. Use hashtags, still useful, I think. And for me, there's always a call to action. You know, in, in other words, you know, what do you want people to do? It might be leave a comment. It might be get in touch. It might be talk to people. Have a look that if they've actually looked at your content, what do you want them to do afterwards? Don't leave them hanging. It's always the worst thing you can do. The third one, creative, is talking about the different forms it can take. And again, the algorithm reacts to one, to the other but it's also what is going to be right for you. If actually your audience takes in the information much better visually or indeed in video format, then clearly that's a resource and that's something you should be using. LinkedIn loves at the moment the document posts. Um, so you've seen loads and loads of them. They're also pushing a lot on the polls. Mix it in. If you're going to do a poll, put a post behind it. It's really useful. So consider those five C's in terms of what you're putting out there each time you post, plan it out, and you're going to have some real success there. The one extra thing I'll throw in, though, if I may, is that we do need to essentially stop the scroll, create a hook. And here's one from a friend, Steve Wright. A little while ago, but I really liked it. Why? Because what he uses is the three lines that appear above your image or your video. If you've got no none of those, then it shows five. But if not, then there's three. And what it does is it hooks you in. It gives you something which makes you want to click on see more. And that's what we want to do or what he wants me to do. Are oh, you a disruptor? Do you love the power it gives you? <gasps> it's not usually what a photographer talks about. What's this about? And so I'm intrigued. I click on it and then, you know, he goes into the, the, the sort of core of the text but it works. And if you can find something which actually draws people in and gives them that hook, then for me, that's an ideal way of doing it. It's like newspapers. If you look at a newspaper, if we still read them, then what do we do? We see a front page, we go for the pictures. So a visual element is always really useful. After that, of course, we then go and have a look at the headlines. So we need those to be talking to us. Again, each one plays. Final thing, and this is becoming more and more common, don't forget you have the opportunity to almost put a little footer, a little signature. Mine's a little bit long at the moment because I'm sort of promoting the search, uh, search uh, webinar I did last week. Um, but it gives a chance for you just to put some of those calls to action in there if you wish, or almost like a little signature in. And just creating that and just cutting and pasting each time is a really good element to play with as well.
Okay, so lots of things that we can work with, but all aimed at getting the engagement, opening conversations, and hopefully ending up with the conversions we're looking for. And this sort of summarizes some of those. The key one I'm going to throw at you in this and pick out of the, the elements here is the building an active support network. The thing that I see that influences distribution more than anything else is not the size of your network, but actually how active it is. I've got a big old network, but lots of them perhaps are not on LinkedIn on a daily basis. Um, and some are from you know a few years ago now. What we're looking for are ones who are sitting on LinkedIn regularly. And if you can build up an element of an active network that when they receive your post, that they interact with it, that is where we get the distribution out there. And that's where the real opportunities lie, because getting comments and likes early on pushes your content out to the rest of your connections, because otherwise it only goes out to between sort of six and 8% as a start point. We want to take it beyond that. And that means the test audience, if you like, reacting well. So gone through a whole load of things. I hope things that will be of use to you. I've got one last slide and then that little bit of a competition that, that I mentioned at the start with prizes. To summarize, first of all, there is no one way to work LinkedIn. What I haven't given you today is you need to do this, 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 and this in this order because it just doesn't work. What works for me may not work for you because we have very different audiences. We have different people we want to talk to. So please work it to what you are interested in. Focus in, number two, on your audience. You know them because you talk to them. What is going to make them sit up and take notice? And if you can focus your profile, those three areas, you're searching and then your activity on them. We're hitting the sweet spot all the way down the line. And then we get them off LinkedIn to play with. Number three, leverage your network and your past work. Those searches that we did and we opened up some warm introductions, ideal way to start the conversation to new ones. People talk about word of mouth being their main source of referrals or, uh, or uh, introductions. Well, this is word of mouth on steroids. It just needs a little bit of playing because we can be very targeted. And then final ones, conversations. That's what we want at the end of the day. Direct messaging is one way, but posts are another one because from conversations we can get to the getting to know and then the conversions, which is ideal. And this is summed up, I think, in number five here. Engage them, create interest, develop the trust that people want. They want to do work with people that they trust great, let's use the system to identify where those points are and then move them off LinkedIn. And while I do appreciate that you kindly borne with me for the last sort of 45 minutes, 55 minutes nearly, um, ultimately what I'm really just telling you is go into that big room and work it. Work it in a way that works for you, that gets you in front of your prospects, but has as an end game and opening the door for an offline conversation, and online if you like, but ultimately meeting face to face is where the business is gonna get done. What I hope is that some of the tactical things that we've looked at in the course of the session will open some ideas and some doors for you to do exactly that. And that brings us to the end. Um, my request and my offer to you, if you found this useful, or to be honest, even if you haven't, <laughs> um, I'm going to ask if you would think about making a LinkedIn post, perhaps with a screenshot, if you have taken one as we went through. Just share what you have taken away from today. I hope some of it will be positive. If it's negative, do share that as well. Happy with that. What I'd ask is that if you tag me in, so the at Mark White, and if you want to do that to the FSB, what I'll do is I will keep tabs on all of this. And I'll put them all into a basket, a virtual basket, of course, and I'll pick two at random. And I'll offer, if you would like, a one-to-one -one three hour session so that we can actually talk through and work through those to your own benefit. So if you create a post and you're happy to do that, tag me and the FSB in. And again, we'll choose a couple of people there and make sure that they get a one-to-one -one if that would be of value to you. And that brings me to the end. I hope that there's been some use there and that there's things that we can tap into. Candy, I see you've appeared again. 
Shall I stop sharing or should we keep yeah, that up there for the time if, being? If that's OK, Mark, fantastic. And you covered so much. And um, looking at the Q&A, we could probably have another two or three events, um, I think, just on LinkedIn. So we've only got um, about five minutes or four minutes for questions. What we'll do, Mark, though, um, I'll make sure that all questions that we haven't answered We'll okay. get together, we'll go through them. And I think let's have a look at posting on LinkedIn, answering those questions we can get to. So one question, you talked about the LinkedIn algorithm. What is the LinkedIn algorithm? Uh, the LinkedIn algorithm is, is quite simply the mathematical formula, I guess, which dictates what appears on each of our home pages. And they take in all sorts of different things. Uh, which essentially evaluates what is going to be good content to put in front of each individual on LinkedIn. Um, and it plays different things. Sometimes it likes videos more than that. Sometimes it says, well, actually a comment is a really powerful indicator that this is a good post. So it puts that post in front of more people. And it is just the way that LinkedIn decides what is the right content to push out there. Um, so that's all it is at the end of the day. Ultimately, if we want to get round it, then using the post search to consume content is a mm -hmm. really nice way. But of course, as we push it out, we want to make sure we're, we're just ticking the right boxes. We're pressing the right button so LinkedIn distributes it. Yeah, that's great. So it's all the, all the tools behind the scenes. Um, we've had a few questions as well around business accounts. Um, so obviously there was a sort of good focus on your personal accounts. A lot of people use LinkedIn, even though they're personal accounts, to do business. Um, but would you say people should be using the same approach for setting up and managing their LinkedIn business accounts? If we're looking at this from the company page, or as they now call them, pages, um, no. Um, everything on LinkedIn revolves around you and I, so individuals. Uh, the company page was brought in about three years after LinkedIn's inception, and it was more a sort of um, a holding page, a, a sort of an aggregation point. So generally, I would always, even if, uh, if you're a solopreneur, I would have a company page. Um, nowadays. Um, I would have a company page and I would build and use some of the functionality there because I think there's a lot of stuff LinkedIn is putting a lot of effort in. Most of it, however, is still likely to be you talking to people. And that's where all of the two way interaction happens. So useful to put it, but it's a very different format. Um, do have some stuff on company pages as well and why. So I can make that available to people. But for me, it's the person that's going to be the key part. That's fantastic. Maybe focus of a, another link to in events in the future. Um, so we've got people saying actually they've got portfolio careers, so they do lots of different um, roles. How, how would you manage that? Would you um, have individual LinkedIn accounts or, or do it all through that individual person's um, account? Ideally, no, uh, you wouldn't have multiple accounts. LinkedIn doesn't like it. Um, point one. Uh, not that that matters too much. Sorry if anyone's from LinkedIn on the call. Um, however, the fact is that it's still you. So what becomes more difficult is I talked about the very specific nature of perhaps the banner and perhaps the, the headline in particular. Um, what we want to try and do, of course, is make sure that it is pushed forward in the right way. So having a single one for you, you can have as many current jobs as you like, and the about section can highlight each of them. And you can, if you wish, have company pages that can expand on each of the different elements. In general, though, unless they're really different, um, then I would encourage people to find a way to mix it on the individual and single profile. Um, as I said, LinkedIn has been known to delete them uh, if they find duplicates. That's great. That's all we've got time for, but we will be going through the questions. Head over to um, Mark's LinkedIn page and we'll try and answer as many of those questions as we can. Um, and obviously, don't forget about the competition, sharing what you liked about the training and including um, Mark and FSB in your comments. So thanks so much. Um, if you want to find out more about FSB, do head over to our website. Thank you.